Hey everybody, welcome to eBusiness Online channel. My name is Fred McKinnon. I'm the founder of eBusiness Online. We are an agency that helps people to sell their physical products online through e-commerce. Uh, we manage Amazon accounts, Walmart accounts, and whatever multi-channel is out there uh, help people do that. So I've been at this for over 20 years and almost every day, if not every day, several times per week, I'm constantly being asked by people one of the same questions over and over. And they say, Fred, how did you get into this? How did you get into e-commerce? Um, so I get a lot of questions like that. I get a lot of Facebook messages, a lot of emails, a lot of text messages, even locally. And, you know, lots of, uh, I want to take you out to lunch and pick your brain about e-commerce, kind of buy you a cup of coffee and pick your brain about e-commerce. My brother-in-law is thinking about doing this. My son-in-law is thinking about doing this. Um, my family member, my friend, I wanted to do a little something extra to make money. I get asked that all the time, all the time. And it, it kind of came to a point where I just couldn't make those appointments anymore. Um, I love, I love talking shop. I love talking about e-commerce, but there's just not enough time in the day really to, to do that with everyone. So part of that was the inspiration for me to create a YouTube channel to talk about e-commerce. I want to be able to answer some of the questions that people always have. And that's one of the ones. So this, you know, really, if you're not interested in my personal story of how I got into this, uh, you can fast forward through this video. Um, if you know me personally, if you know me at all, I love to talk. I have the gift of gab. Um, since I was a little child in first grade, I always got talks too much on my report card going through primary school. I love to talk, especially when it's something that I'm very passionate about. So, but I do get asked the question all the time. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna stand in front of this camera, unrehearsed, without notes, and just kind of pretend that, hey, we're, we're sitting, I don't have my coffee cup with me, but I, I've got my water jug here. So let's kind of pretend we're sitting over at my favorite wake up coffee here on St. Simon's Island, and we're having, we're having that coffee together. And, uh, you know, you're asking me, how did I get into this? So <clears throat> really, you know, to answer that question, I have to go way, way back. Um, I've been a musician my entire life. My music has been a vital part of my life since I was old enough to climb up on a piano bench and plunk out melodies on the piano. Um, I always tell people that God put me here on the earth for my music and I sell widgets on the internet to pay the bills. And since that's evolved and I help other people sell widgets on the internet to pay the bills. Uh, but music has been the most important part of my life, my music, my faith. And so for 25 years of my life, I was in full-time music ministry doing, um, as a worship leader, as a worship pastor in churches, doing music, mostly contemporary Christian music. but. Into that, I graduated from Georgia Southern University, not with a business degree, but I graduated with a music degree, and I double majored in piano performance and also in theory and composition. Um, so I love producing records. I love producing music. And as part of the service that I had, when the internet came about, the internet transformed the way that we shared music. And you can look at that now, you know, if you're, you're my age, at, at the time of recording this, I'm 53 years old, and, uh, you know, I've watched the music industry completely just change dramatically in my lifetime. Um, but back when I was a young lad right out of college and even in college, I was producing music for people in a recording studio. I had my own studio, and I was helping mostly independent Christian artists make demos, songwriter demos, or their own kind of personal albums. And uh, as part of that, the internet's come about now, and so we're starting to sell physical CDs and cassette tapes on their website. And so I would have a package for artists, you know, it's like you pay X amount of dollars for 10 songs in the studio, and part of that package includes, um, you know, 2,000 CDs, compact discs, a couple of thousand cassette tapes. People are going, what is that? What's a CD? What's a cassette tape? 
And, um, but also then at some point, you know, there was a bonus I could add in there where, hey, we'll build you a website and let you do e-commerce, sell your music CDs, your cassette tapes on your website. So uh, I had had have several albums of my own. If you are ever interested in my music career, you can search Fred McKinnon Music. I have a whole separate YouTube channel, Fred McKinnon Music, full of years and years, decades of music. Um, I am on Spotify, Apple Music, all the streaming platforms. So you can for, certain, for sure find me there. Um, but I had my own website, highestpraise.com. Uh, and that was the name of my production company, Highest Praise Productions. And I was, I was actually making Christian music. I was writing songs, and on my Highest Praise website, you could download MP3 files, and you could download PDF files of the sheet music to the songs we were writing, which were mostly church songs, you know, the songs to be sung in church. Um, and then there were MIDI files, and if you're not a musician, you're not tracking with me there, but it's, it's like a little tiny file that you could load up in a, in a keyboard or a workstation that reproduced like an accompaniment track, basically. Uh, I would record the piano part and the bass part and the drum part and all the parts in a keyboard and create a MIDI file that you could put on a floppy disk and stick it in most keyboards and play it back. Um, so that's how I got into e-commerce. Um, by making those available on my website. And over time, I started doing the same thing for clients, helping them sell their cassettes and CDs. Over time, that evolved into web website hosting. So I had a small company called HPP Christian Web Hosting. It eventually um, was marketed to churches and ministries, and then it just I had lots of just non-faith-based customers, so we changed it to HPP web solutions. There's a common thing, HPP. It all goes back to my corporation that I founded right out of college, Highest Praise Productions. And so that was my entrance into e-commerce, but not in the way you think, not with products, right? Some physical CDs, physical cassettes, building websites, having a web hosting company that eventually I sold. And during that time, uh, I started getting interested in e-commerce as far as physical products. And I stumbled it into it the craziest way. I'm the youngest of four siblings. I have uh, two older brothers and an older sister. And my older brother, Rob, he reached out to me. I forget when it was. I'm guessing probably somewhere maybe around uh, uh, probably 1991, 92 somewhere like that, 92, 93. And my brother Rob was trying to find Lego Bionicles, this toy, Lego Bionicles. He was trying to find them for his nephew for a birthday present. And they were sold out everywhere. Just no one had them. And he was like, hey, brother, Fred, aren't you, don't you know how to do eBay? At the time, there was eBay. And uh, Amazon was just barely out there. Amazon was a bookstore, right? And they had just started putting physical products. But I'm like, yeah, I know eBay. So he goes, well, can you help me with the internet? Help me figure out how to get Lego Bionicles. So I looked, and Lego Bionicles were sold out everywhere. And I'd done enough of eBay where I knew how you could go to eBay and you could search for something, and then you could filter by sold listings. And I saw all the Lego Bionicles were green, meaning they had all sold. So everybody that had a Lego Bionicle that listed it sold it at some price. And I've always been an entrepreneur. I was the kid on the bicycle selling you Christmas cards, candy, candy bars, doing fundraisers, jump rope for heart, you name it. I sold it. And I was on my bike all over a little town in middle Georgia called McCray, Georgia, selling stuff, uh, knocking on your door, always was doing that. I've just always been in my blood. When I got into middle school, I was mowing lawns, had a little lawn care business, doing that through high school. It's always been what I've done. I've always worked. Worked in grocery stores, worked everywhere. So <clears throat> that entrepreneur mind flipped the switch. And I was like, all right, I don't care about my nephew, Ethan, and his Bionicles anymore. I want to know where can I buy some and sell them. And I just started searching to try to figure out how can I find and buy toys wholesale and resell them on the internet, on eBay. So I started just searching. 
I don't. I was gonna say I started Googling it, but I don't. Honestly, I don't even know if Google was around then. I was probably Yahooing it. Uh, search for it, and I started reading about drop shipping. Now, drop shipping. If you don't know what drop ship means, it means when an entity has products, and they will ship that customer. They'll ship that product to your customer for you. They will drop ship it. So. For example, I could sell something that I don't have as long as I have a relationship with the person who does have that product. And then when I sell it, the person that has the product can then ship it to the person that bought it for me. That's called drop shipping. And I started learning about drop shipping and I learned that with drop shipping I could have access to all these products that I didn't have to buy. I didn't have to spend my hard earned money on inventory and I would have to buy that. I wouldn't have to buy it. And I could list it as if I owned it. And when someone bought it, then the middleman was the distributor or the drop shipper who would then ship it to the customer, drop ship to the customer for me. And I learned that, you know, there were distributors out there who had thousands and thousands and thousands of products who would allow you to list all of those products for sale, mark them up, sell them, and then they would, they would ship it to the customer, drop ship, and they'd have a packing slip in the box with my company name. So it looked like it came from me. And <clears throat> so I started reading about that. I thought, mm, interesting. Well, I'm like, but how do I find these people? How do I find them? And there are lots of different places you could go to pay money to try to get lists or access, you know, to secret lists and things like this. And I remember probably in the middle of the night when, when I would go down a rabbit hole like this, I would go down the rabbit hole, right? I mean, all the way down the rabbit hole um, and not sleep. I would stay up for like a whole night and <clears throat> I finally found one and I was like, they're claiming that for $99, you get a lifetime membership to their access to their directory of drop shippers, 99 bucks. Now, mind you, 99 bucks was a lot of money to me then. Did I remind you I was working at a church, right? So I was a full-time music minister in a church, and I was making nothing, a lot, not much money at all. It's all about the calling, not about the salary. So 99 bucks was a real gamble for me. And, you know, do you trust these people? Is it real? Well, I can tell you that I made a $99 investment that night. It was a website that still exists today called Worldwide Brands and to their dropship source directory. I'll have a link to that in my show notes on this, on this YouTube. I'll, I'll have a link to it where you can actually go and look at it yourself. I don't know if it's $99 anymore, but it was 99 bucks then, and I took a big, big gamble, if this is even legit. I rolled the dice, I spent the $99, and that has since turned into in excess of $100 million plus in revenue. So. I'd say my $99 gamble uh, converting to in excess of 100 million has paid for itself a few times over. It was exactly what they said it would be. So I go in there and I was like, Legos. Well, I couldn't, I never did find Legos, but I found two or three distributors who had games, video games, video game accessories, software, computer games, things like that. So I was like, hey, let's do this. And I was like, okay. I need a storefront. So I messed around and I came up with a domain name called discountkidsgames.com. Bought it and I was running a web hosting company. Still, I'm running a web hosting. So I had servers, right? So it didn't cost me anything. It cost me, you know, what, nine bucks to buy a domain name. It didn't cost me anything to throw up a website. So I put up a website, I had a friend of mine design the logo. And at that time, there was no Shopify, there was no big commerce, you know, there's all these big shopping platforms. The one that everybody was using was a PHP based uh, script platform called OS Commerce. If you're, any of you guys are like e-commerce veterans, you're laughing, you're smiling. You remember OS Commerce. And so I started with OS Commerce and I built my store and it was, I mean, it was wretched, but I built that thing and I opened distributor accounts with several of these drop shippers that I found in the Worldwide Brands directory. And once a day, 
I would download, um, oh, I hooked up with another third party provider at the time their name was Inventory Source, still in business, inventorysource.com. And what Inventory Source did was they would aggregate all these feeds from different distributors. If you had an account open with a distributor, you could, you could get Inventory Source would then take all of their product information and download it and format it in a way that was easier for you to manage. So they would format it as a feed file that would update an OS commerce store. And so Inventory Source, Worldwide Brands, those two were the pillars of the beginning of my e-commerce career. Both of them still in business. And Inventory Source now is called FlexPoint. Again, all of these vendors I'm talking about, as many as I can remember, I'll put links in the show notes so you can check them out. FlexPoint. I still use FlexPoint to this day to do some drop shipping for one of my branded websites. Over time, Inventory Source also offered custom files for something called an Amazon Z Shop, Z like Zebra. There was no Seller Central. There was no, there was no uh, FBA. There, everything about selling on Amazon, if you know anything about it at all, everything about selling on Amazon that exists today didn't exist then. There wasn't even Seller Central yet. And so I had what was called a Z Shop. And once a day, I would download the current inventory and pricing to my Discount Kids Games products. And I would upload them to Amazon Z Shop. And I'll never, ever forget when I got my first sold ship now email from Amazon. And I made my first sale. So back in that day, it was drop shipping. And I would get a sold ship now email from Amazon. And somebody would buy a uh, random, you know, computer game, okay? Carmen San Diego or <laughs> something like that. And I would get the sold ship now email. I'd have to go to Amazon, open that order, and then I'd have to go to the drop ship distributor, log in there. Then I would take the SKU, the product SKU, and search the vendor's website, add it to cart, check out, change the ship to address instead of my address as default. I would change the ship to address to the customers on Amazon and pay with my credit card and submit that order. And then, you know, 24 hours later or less, I would get a confirmation email back from the distributor saying, hey, we ship your order to customer A and here's the tracking number. I would take the tracking number, go back to Amazon, and log in, paste it in. And I did this for quite a while. And over time, I added more suppliers, and I added more products, and it grew, and it grew. And that was a lot of copying and pasting. Meanwhile, I'm still working full-time as a pastor, a worship pastor, music minister in a church. Um, so I got a lot of copying and pasting. Also, we'd still get orders on the website, discountkidsgames.com, thekidmall.com. I started making different websites to, you know, different branded websites. They were all drop shipping somebody else's products, but just different ways to experiment. But really where I found success was Amazon. And over time, I hired my first part-time person to come to my house, to my home office, over my garage to copy-paste orders for me. And... That's how I got started. That's how I got into Amazon. Now, over the next many, many years, that changed a lot. The biggest thing that changed were, were big kind of leaps of faith that I would take to upgrade my business to the next level. So one of the biggest ones was going from um, getting, you know, 15 or 20 orders a day, copy paste, to integration software which at this now integration software would automate all of this. So there's no more copying and pasting. It would automate everything. And every time that happened, it was, you know, a pretty significant investment. It was a pretty significant commitment um, that I had to really wrestle with and see if I wanted to do that. But over time I did that and I, I changed integration platforms over the years. I started with a smaller, cheaper one and eventually was with uh, Channel Advisor, which people have heard of. It's probably the big granddaddy, and I was paying over $6,000 a month for Channel Advisor. But at that point in my dropship business, I was managing probably a half a million active SKU 
on every conceivable marketplace. I'm talking Amazon, Walmart, Newegg, uh, Jet.com when Jet launched, uh, Best Buy Marketplace, Rakuten, uh, and plenty, Price Grabber, so marketplaces I can't even remember that have long since come and gone. Um, and we were doing, you know, personally, I was doing about 10 to $14 million a year in sales, 100% of which was drop shipping, all while still working full time in a church. Now, ethically, morally, I always went above and beyond to never sacrifice my full time job, my work, my focus. Um, I worked in the morning before office time. I worked in the evenings. I worked on the weekends. I worked seven days a week and I'm raising four kids with my wife at this time. So lots of put kids to bed and then go up to the bonus room and work until midnight and do it all over again. It was a lot of grinding, a whole lot of grinding. But more importantly, I formed teams and I hired and assembled some of the best people that I've ever known that worked for me over those years and I would train them how to do it and they would do it. And at one point I had as many as nine employees doing all this for me uh, because I truly was faithful and loyal to my job where I was. Um, I'd check in every now and then, take a quick call, you know, answer an email. But for the most part, I was focused where I needed to be focused and had a great team who ran this business for me. So it started out with music. It started out selling cassettes. It started out selling CDs and then evolved into drop shipping through the Worldwide Brands directory. Now over time, Worldwide Brands was popular. Those distributors, everybody knew who they were. And people say, Fred, what were you selling? What were you selling? I mean, I'm telling you, I was selling video games, video game accessories. I was selling clothing. I was selling curling irons, computers, laptops, TVs, hard drives, uh, tents, fishing poles. I, Every distributor I would reach out to would be a different genre, or some of them were huge national distributors with over 100,000 products in their catalog spanning across every possible category, right? Um, so I'd get one order and it'd be a blender, and then 30 seconds later I'd get an order, it'd be a Lenovo laptop, and then 30 seconds later I'd get an order and it would be a, a browning rifle jacket, and the next order would be a tent, and then the next order would be hunting boots, and then the next order would be some kind of a Nyko video game controller. It was crazy, it was all over the place. And during this season, the internet evolved, and the internet evolved, Amazon evolved into Seller Central. Over time, Amazon became where it was now they offered FBA, FBA, fulfilled by Amazon. This was revolutionary. Because now, as a seller on Amazon, instead of being responsible as a merchant, as a seller, to ship your own products, you could then buy product that you own, your product, send it into Amazon's warehouses, and Amazon themselves would pick, pack, pull, and ship the product for you, FBA, fulfilled by Amazon. And you see that still today. It's, a, it's the biggest part of Amazon as far as on the shopper side. When you see on Amazon where it says sold by and then like the seller name. <clears throat> Speaking of which, mine was and is HPP Enterprises. Remember the beginning of the story, I said everything's HPP, so it's highest praise productions. Then I had HPP uh, web hosting, HPP web solutions, and then HPP publishing company for songwriter royalties and publishing royalties, and then HPP Enterprises was the name that I created as a seller on all these marketplaces. No matter what I was selling, no matter what the brand was, <clears throat> all of them were sold under the umbrella of a little DBA doing business as um, trade name as HPP Enterprises. And everybody always thinks HPP is like initials for my name or partners like Harry, Peter, Paul. And uh, I'm always explaining They'll say, highest praise productions. What does that have to do with e -class? Well, It's a long story. <laughs> Watch the YouTube video. Anyway, over time, the margins on drop shipping got smaller and smaller and smaller because 
social media is out now. There's Facebook. There's people saying, here's how to drop ship. There's YouTube. All of this stuff didn't exist when I started. I don't think YouTube existed when I started. I'm not sure. Somebody would have to go check, but I didn't use it. That's for sure. But, you know, over time, everybody started using this. So, whereas when I started, I might have been one of four other sellers in the entire United States who were drop shipping Sony headphones on Amazon. But if I went back there today, there'd be five pages full of sellers, right? And the only way to get that sale is on price. And so we would reprice, we'd use software that would automatically look at all the competitors and it would say, oh, well, competitor A, uh, Beach Audio, they're at $99.99, so my software would make my price $99.98. And then I would be the one who would show at the top of the page on Amazon, buy now, buy now from HPP Enterprises. And I'd get a few orders and then I'd stop getting orders. I'd look, well, Beach Audio or Beach Camera is now at $99.97. Their repricer ran. And so you reprice each other into oblivion all the way down until you hit a floor price that you define. And mine was ridiculously low. Like, whatever my landed cost is, by landed cost, I mean, if those headphones cost me $70, and Amazon's going to take 15% out of it, and it's going to cost me $10 to ship them, then I know I have all in delivered, including shipping and Amazon fees, all in, it's going to cost me X amount for this transaction. And then I'd say, I'm going to mark that up 4%, right? Um... And I'd say, that's my floor. And when I would reprice all the way down and hit that bottom, you know, I'm not willing to take less than that. Then you either, you know, stayed there and won the sales or your competitor who was willing to take less, maybe they were getting a better price on those headphones. They, they would keep getting the sale. Uh, so when I talk about doing, you know, $14 million of e-commerce transactions in a year, you have to remember that was mass drop shipping with thousands, thousands, hundreds of thousands of products and the margin was three, four percent. So tons and tons of overhead, tons and tons of stress and anxiety and worry because this video would be too long if I talk about drop shipping. I'll make a completely separate series on the pains and woes of drop shipping, how to do it wrong, how to do it right. But lots can go wrong with drop shipping. Lots can go wrong. For one, there's latency. There's delay between when your supplier updates how much quantity they have and when you update what quantity you have and then when you update it on a marketplace. So your supplier may have five widgets left and then I say I've got five widgets because we're talking to each other. You know, our, our software is talking to you. I got five. I tell Amazon I got five. My competitor, A, comes over here and then buys all five of them at once. I no longer, have, they no longer have any. I'm still showing five. It's gonna be an hour or two before my software updates that they don't have them anymore. I sell it on Amazon and I have to cancel the order and tell the person I didn't have what I said I had. Big trouble there, big trouble, lots of stress. Multiply that by a couple of hundred thousand active listings. You can see what a headache that becomes really quick. So over time, margins eroded and with FBA, that was a business model that a lot of competing sellers adopted very quickly. Um, they would pick these products and instead of drop shipping them one by one, they would go and buy case quantities or pallet or truckloads. Now, A, they got a much better price to do that. B, because they were utilizing Amazon's new FBA, Fulfilled by Amazon program, uh, they got preference in search, so they would show up in the buy box more than I would selling a single widget, right? So everybody knows, if, if I'm going to say, I'm going to buy one, and you're going to buy 50, you're going to get a better unit price than I am. So I'm already losing on price, I'm already losing on margin, I'm already losing on favorability. And you might say, well, Fred, then why didn't you do that? Why didn't you just do FBA? I did. I did some, but that required capital. That required a risky investment in spending your money and buying inventory that you may or may not be able to sell at a profit. And <clears throat> I wasn't, I didn't have a lot of extra money to float. And a lot of what I did make, I paid out in salary and I paid out in, in payroll because 
I keep going back to the fact that I had a, I, I had a full-time job, right? I had a full-time job that I loved, doing what I felt called to be here on this earth doing. And so a lot of the money I made, I made to keep my team employed because they were really the ones running the business. Um, so all that to say, the margins on the dropship model eroded to where it wasn't worth doing anymore. And about the same time, um, there was this kind of rage that swept through Amazon <clears throat> called private labeling. Now, private labeling isn't new or unique to Amazon, but this is where, for the first time now, a seller becomes a brand. And instead of just flipping and reselling other third-party brands' products for a little bit of a margin, arbitrage, you know. Arbitrage is a word we use a lot in e-commerce. It, it, arbitrage is the difference between here and there. So if I buy it for 80 and I sell it for 100, the $20 difference in the middle, that's arbitrage. And so I can arbitrage the difference. Um, so, uh, you know, instead of doing that, people were creating brands for the first time and they were creating their own products, becoming, quote, a manufacturer. Um, there was one guy in particular who almost all these people I've met, I've spent time with, I've gone to conferences with, uh, that we're in each other's cell phones. Um, there's one gentleman that still to this day I, I've never met in person. Um, but he was responsible for a big pivot in my business. His name's Scott Volker, and he had a website called The Amazing Seller. And he was teaching people how to private label on Amazon. And it was another one of those, you know, 100 bucks or something like that to join his course. And I did it, and I devoured it. <clears throat> and... I followed the steps and it was easy. It was so easy back then. Nobody was doing this, you know what I mean? And so you'd go to Alibaba.com, huge directory of mostly Chinese factories, and you'd say, this is what I want to sell. And you'd type it in, you'd find some generic version of it, you'd create a brand name, you'd create a logo, you'd have them stitch it on or laser engrave it on or do something and whoa, now you have your own product, your own brand. And there were tools that evolved over this time that didn't exist before that started giving you analytical data, things like Jungle Scout and Helium 10 that would say, hey, this bamboo cutting board, these four people are selling this bamboo cutting board on Amazon and they're, they're selling 400 of them a month and they're making this much money. And so I'd go to Alibaba and I'd say bamboo cutting board and I'd find a cutting board that looked like that one, maybe a little different. And I'd come up with a brand name. And in this case, uh, it was Frederica Trading was the brand name I created for a cutting board. And that brand still exists. It's small, it's kind of on the back burner for me right now with just a few active products, but it's, I like to stay in the game. So I don't really even make a lot of money off that brand, but I like to keep it active just so I have uh, a playground um, to use. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> made a cool logo, got the brand name, Frederica Trading, had it trademarked, set it up on Amazon, started sending in bamboo cutting boards, and that was my first private label. Um, so wow, now you know, I got a brand name. I'm a manufacturer. I'm not really out there making bamboo cutting boards. They're being made in China, I'm importing them. That's how I got into private labeling. And so over time, I was like, realized, I'm under a lot of stress drop shipping all these third party products, selling somebody else's product at three, four percent net margin. And, or I can private label and sell my own brand and make 40 or 50 percent margin. And I don't have to ship it. I send it all to Amazon. They do all the work. I don't have to have this whole huge staff of nine people. And I don't have to outlay all this expensive money for all this software and all these integration tools to manage, you know, hundreds of thousands of listings and catalogs and price changes and repricing. So I made a very, very difficult decision to pivot again. That word pivot happens all through my e-commerce career. I pivoted again and a really, really tough, emotional, hard call. I laid off all my team and got rid of all my employees 
and I discontinued, uh, at the time it was Channel Advisor, I, I was up for my yearly renewal of the contract at six plus thousand dollars a month just for the software. And I cut it and I deleted over a half a million products off of Amazon, Walmart, Jet, Newegg, all of these marketplaces. And I rebooted HPP Enterprises at that time with a handful of SKU that were private label SKU to me that made uh, 10 plus times the margin and profit that the others with almost no stress. And, you know, I won't say it was passive, but it, it didn't take a lot of work. It didn't take a whole lot of work at all. And that's how I got into private labeling and manufacturing and branding, trademarking. This whole journal, uh, not journal, this whole journey has taught me so many things about business, business accounting, importing, logistics, uh, brokers, customs, duties, taxes, uh, all the legal stuff of, of trademarking and filing for patents and things like that. It's been an incredible journey. I love it. Can you tell? I love it. If you're still actually on this video this deep into a 35 minute video, you must love it too. You must be really interested. Um, <clears throat> all right. So anyway, I guess about five years ago, uh, I, I came to a season of life where my career as being on full-time staff at a church came to an end and, um, wasn't quite ready you know, to walk away from that, but it happened. And I said, well, in the back of my mind, I'd always kind of wondered what would it be like if I just invested myself full time into e-commerce? And I finally had the chance to do that. And I did that. And the first thing that I thought was, I either need to make a course about how to sell on Amazon. I need to make a course or a school or, you know, some kind of a membership that you can buy, or maybe I'll do consulting. Um, and I wrestle back and forth, and there's just so many courses out there already that are so good. Um, I thought, you know, I don't want to invest so much time into creating the content to build a course when there's so many great courses out there. And that's one of the things people ask me all the time. If I want to start, where do I go? And back then and still today, of all the options, I still wholeheartedly recommend the Proven Amazon course by Jim Cockrum. Um, I've got a link to it. It's an affiliate link. I'll get a cup of coffee or something if you actually subscribe to that. Hands down, it's got to be the most robust, all, and, and it covers so many ways to make money online. And that's the other question people ask me all day long. If I want to get started, what should I do? And I always say, you need to start out by taking the Proven Amazon course by Jim Cockrum. Link to it in, this, in my notes below. Um, but I decided, yeah, I don't think I want to do a course. Now, maybe I'll do that one day. I, and I've got a whole lot of videos that I've recorded, so maybe someday I will do that. But for now, that's what I would do. And, and so I started doing a little bit of consulting because, again, people were asking me all the time, tell me about how to do e-commerce. So I saw an opportunity there, and I've got a good, great friend here locally who's also a bit of a business mentor for me. And, and we meet at the end of every year. And we go over strategy and taxes, tax savings, investing, ideas, business structure. He's the one who helped me make the pivot to get rid of all the drop shipping. And he said, he, he, he was firm. He said, Fred, no more free coffees. No more free lunches. The information you have is valuable. Nobody can pick your brain about how to do e-commerce anymore. No more. Stop it. No more free lunches. No more coffees. And I took him to heart. And so I started eBusiness Online. And that's where we are today. And initially it was just consulting. And, you know, I'd charge a couple of hundred bucks for an hour and sit down and give somebody 20 years of wisdom, 20 years of hard knock on the job training. And when I say 20 years, it wasn't all good. I could fill up a video that would take all day of the hurdles I hit, account suspensions, lawsuits, you name it. I've seen it. And still today, as an agency owner. So we pivoted again and I began to see people and I was like, you need help, you need help. You should be on Amazon. Why aren't you on Amazon? Oh, we don't know how to be on Amazon. Or we don't wanna be, we're not sure we understand it. Or we tried that once, I've heard that one a lot. We tried that once. 
I'm like, you didn't try it with somebody that's been doing it for two decades. <coughs> Time for the water break. <coughs> Coffee's getting cold. So, yeah, no more coffees, no more lunches. I still do that because I love it. I like to give back when I can. And that's part of why I'm making these videos. It's because I might not be able available to go have coffee with you or eat lunch with you and let you pick my brain, but I can take, you know, a couple hours and make some videos here that tell you everything that I would tell you if we were sitting across um, the table from one another. But that's what led into the creation of eBusiness Online my account management agency and now we help dozens and dozens of brands to sell their products across the internet whether it be on Amazon or Walmart or their own Shopify store uh, Wayfair and in six months this will be outdated because there's new marketplaces there's TikTok shops right now which are the rage and I have someone on our team that's really just crazy about e-commerce on the TikTok shops. And it's Thursday, December 28th, 2023, right now when I'm recording this. And that might not exist next year, right? Amazon might not exist next year. I doubt it, but you know, the landscape changes like crazy. But that's my journey. It's been an amazing journey. I absolutely love it. It's given me uh, such a life that is it takes a lot of work don't let anyone tell you that e-commerce is passive and it's just set it and forget it it takes a lot of work but it's kind of work you can do from anywhere right um, I can place a purchase order or follow up with somebody from a ski lift if I want so it's given it a life where I can do that um, I'll make more videos about some of the perks of e-commerce ownership because there's some amazing amazing perks of this lifestyle um, but that's it uh, if you watch this first thank you I, I don't expect many people are gonna watch a 40 minute long video about me and my my path my career uh, I'd be really humbled and flattered if you did and if so I know it's not about me it's because you really want to know how a guy got started on this and, and how it evolved into where it is today but uh, hundreds of millions of dollars later does that mean I've, I'm a multimillionaire? Not at all, not at all. But it is, uh, it's one of the most amazing opportunities to get into and it's wide open. So if you have questions, I'd love for you to comment on this video. Ask your question and I will try to answer your question. Furthermore, I might take your question and make a whole video just about your question. So use this video and in the comments, ask your questions and I'll be happy to answer them. I plan to personally review them myself. I really want to thank you for listening. Thanks for joining me on this journey. God bless you. I hope to see you soon.